Hello, my name is JT Benitez, and I'm here to talk to you about common Ohio birds. Once again, I'm JT Benitez, and I'm the Extension Educator for Agriculture and Natural Resources for the Ohio State University Extension in Butler County. Some uh, fun fast facts about Ohio birds. 421 species of birds have been documented in Ohio, and only 40 of these have only been seen once. So they've only seen 40 of these birds one time in Ohio. Around 300 species of birds occur annually. About 180 species of birds breed every year in Ohio, with one third of these birds overwintering in Central and South America. So they actually migrate into Ohio to have their young and spend the summertime here and head back down south where it's warmer in the wintertime. The most numerous bird in Ohio is the European starling, and there's 9 million of them estimated. It's one of our biggest problem invasive birds in our state and really the country as well. It came from Europe during the time when they settled um, America back in the early days of settlement of this country. The four species that are very common but not native to our state or country is the European starling, which is very devastating for our birds, our native birds, and other issues with, with what they cause. The house sparrow, which is also native to Europe, is another one of our problem bird, birds for our native ones, for our native birds. It caused trouble for them as well. The house finch, which is actually from the western United States, and the rock pigeon, which is from Europe and the Mediterranean region. You'll see this rock pigeon in a lot of different cities in the country, especially New York. You probably have seen those on television, um, or even if you've been there, you've seen those, those pigeons flying everywhere. Generally, those are probably the rock pigeons, which originated from New York. And if you go to Europe, you'll see those rock pigeons everywhere in all the cities. Three species of birds are extinct in Ohio and the U.S. It's the passenger pigeon, the Carolina parakeet, and the ivory-billed woodpecker. Quite the majestic birds they were. Um, they, there were so many passenger pigeons at one time, the story goes, that flocks could take hours to fly over your head. That's how many birds there was at that time. The Carolina parakeet was the only type of parakeet found in the U.S. The ivory-billed woodpecker was quite the majestic bird, and they're not quite sure if it is extinct yet. The last time they've seen it was in 1944. They still think that it possibly could be in parts of Florida or Louisiana and old woods and forests that had not been disturbed. Um, they're still waiting to see if they can officially mark them as extinct. But these are the three birds um, that are no longer in the state of Ohio or the U.S. for the most part, except for the, the woodpecker, which they're not sure of. And here they are. Here is the lost species that we lost here. Um, the passenger pigeon and the Carolina parakeet both died at the Cincinnati Zoo in 1914, and they actually shared the same cage one after the other. The ivory bill woodpeckers there in the middle is only a, a, a stuffed model of it, and same with the Carolina parakeet on the left. The passenger pigeon on the right is actually Martha, the name of the last passenger pigeon ever, which was at the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, it's very sad to have lost these birds, um, and they're gone from history at this point. They're just stuffed examples now. So today I'm going to talk to you about the most known common birds of Ohio. We'll be talking about 51 of the most common birds that are out there. So we'll start off with wild poultry turkeys, pheasants, quail, and grouse. The ring-necked pheasant is part of the pheasant and grouse family. This species is originally from Europe and is a popular game bird for hunters. It ranges throughout the state, but the largest concentrations of them are in the Northwest and Central Ohio regions, and they reside in Ohio year-round. They prefer outside or open outdoor countryside with a mix of tall grasses, fence rows, tree lines, and farm fields. They are considered omnivores. Their diet consists of a variety of grains and smaller seeds, fresh green shoots, buds, roots, berries, insects, and spiders, earthworms, snails, lizards, frogs, and rodents also. They are a popular bird that you see a lot of hunters going after, and they actually will let them loose in fields to go hunting after them. They're very cool, very interesting birds. Um, here's their sounds to listen to. OK, 
Okay, so that's actually what they sound like. It's very cool. Here's the rough grouse. The rough grouse is part of the family of pheasants and grouse. They range in Ohio from southern and eastern Ohio from Adams County to the north to Ashtabula on Lake Erie. They generally in the range of hill country Ohio, southeast Ohio with lots of woods and hills and, and open pasture areas and places. They like small meadows to woodlands to forestland and they're year round residents of the state. They like deciduous forest, especially with scattered clearings, dense undergrowth, or overgrown pastures. They are unfortunately becoming less and less common and are more of a rare sight in Ohio nowadays. They're considered omnivores eating a variety of grains and smaller seeds, fresh green shoots, buds, roots, berries, insects, spiders, earthworms, snails, and many other things. And here's how they sound. <laughs> Very cool, very cool. Okay, next is the wild turkey. Turkeys are part of the pheasant and grouse family. They range throughout Ohio, but are most common in the unglaciated areas of Southeast Ohio, which is east in Southeastern Ohio and Hill Country, Ohio. They are year round residents and their habitat consists of woodlands, forests, fields, and fence rows. They were roost in trees at nighttime away from predators. They are considered omnivores and their diet consists of acorns, leaves, seeds, grains, berries, buds, grass blades, roots, bulbs, insects, spiders, snails, frogs, lizards, snakes, and salamanders. And they're actually starting to live over our, our part of the state in Southwest Ohio. Um, they're becoming more common and less uncommon nowadays. So you will start to see them, especially um, in some parts of Warren County, up in Preble County and parts of Butler, Western Butler County, you will start to see turkeys now. So it's great that they've made a comeback. And here's how they sound. The female is on the left, you'll hear her kind of cluck. And then the tom, which is a gobbler or a tom, will gobble um, when he makes his call. Okay, very cool, very cool. Oh, and that's the hen again there. That's how she sounds when she talks. Okay, so now we're on to the northern bobwhite quail. They're in the family of New World quail. They range primarily in the far southern edge of Ohio and they're becoming a rare sight to see or hear. Once prevalent, the numbers have not been doing well. Um, they, they're much more rare to see. Um, they're not quite sure what's causing it. Could be predator, predators or loss of habitat, but it's a sad thing to, to hear that decrease. I remember hearing them a lot when I was a kid, and now I don't hear them that very much anymore, and that's, that's kind of sad to hear. They reside in Ohio year round, their habitat consists of open country with brushy thickets, scattered trees, grasslands, fields, and transition to scrub type fields, uh, woodland pastures, and fence rows. Their diet consists of seeds, leaves, buds, berries, acorns, roots, insects, spiders, and snails. They may eat mostly seeds in the winter, but more insects eat in the summertime. And here's how they sound. Very distinctive sound that you will hear, so it's very cool to hear them when they do make their sounds. Let's hear that one more time. Okay, so now we're on, whoops, let me fix that real quick. Now we're on to hawks and falcons. The red-tailed hawk is in the family of hawks, and the American kestrel is in the family of falcons. They're both considered birds of prey, and their range is uh, common throughout Ohio, and they reside here year-round. They are both live in open, 
uh, landscapes, parks, meadows, farm fields, woodlots, forest, and along roadways. They are very adaptable to many of Ohio's landscapes and regions. You will see them in the middle of the city to the country. You'll see them along the uh, telephone lines. You'll see them everywhere. Their diet consists of small mammals, birds, reptiles, voles, rats, rabbits, ground squirrels um, are all some of its major prey. Unfortunately, they'll eat chickens, which is a thing I raise at my house. They'll eat pheasants, reptiles, snakes, bats, frogs, toads, insects, and whatever else they can get a hold of. So here's how the hawk sounds. And here's how the American kestrel sounds. I'm sure you've heard both of these. Okay, I know I hear the hawk one all the time. Next is uh, a killdeer. A killdeer is a bird in the family called plovers. They range throughout the state of Ohio and they're considered a migratory bird in the northern half of Ohio, but are residents in year round in the southern end of Ohio. Their habitat consists of all open areas, especially mud flats, large open fields, and muddy pastures. Especially at my new house I'm building, it's a very muddy, um, wet pat or old field, and they are all over the place in that field. They mostly cons uh, consume a diet of insects such as beetles, caterpillars, grasshoppers fly larvae, but will eat spiders, earthworms, centipedes, crayfish, snails, and seeds as well. And so there they are right there. I'm sure many of you have seen them at different places. And here's how they sound. Okay. That is a very obvious noise that you'll hear when you do see them. Next is the morning dove. They're in a family of pigeons and doves. They range throughout Ohio and are very abundant in year round residents. There's lots and lots of morning doves. They are very adaptable to most habitats and they'll live just about anywhere, backyards, parks, open countryside, cities, pastures, fields, woodlands, um, anywhere you can think of, they're there. Their diet consists almost entirely of seeds, which is 99% of their diet. And they favor seeds of grains, grasses, ragweeds, and other plants. They may occasionally eat some insects, snails, um, very rarely though that they will eat them. And here's how they sound. I'm sure everyone has heard these they're very, very distinct sound. You hear them all over the place, especially in the pine trees. If you have some pine trees on your property, they love hanging out in those. Okay, next is uh, the uh, cuckoos. The black-billed cuckoo and the yellow-billed cuckoo are part of the cuckoo family of birds. They both migrate into Ohio during the spring and summer season to breed and raise their young. The black-billed cuckoo primarily uh, migrates to the northern part of Ohio, and the yellow-billed cuckoo is very common during migration throughout the state. You're most likely to see and hear the yellow-billed cuckoo in southern Ohio. They are both considered a woodland species and prefer habitats of young to older dense forests and scruffy thickets, orchards, fields, or, or woodlands reverting back, or fields reverting back to woodlands. The diet consists of caterpillars and other insects, um, tent caterpillars, beetles, grasshoppers, snails, small fish, and sometimes eggs of other birds, berries, and small fruits. So here's how the black-billed cuckoo sounds. Okay, and here's how the yellow-billed cuckoo sounds.
I know I've heard that bird before. Yeah, I definitely have heard that bird before. So they are down and around here, no doubt. The next one we'll go over is owls. We've got the Eastern Screech Owl, the Great Horned Owl, and the Barred Owl, all part of the superb owls family of birds. All these owls range throughout the state of Ohio in all corners of the state. They are year-round residents. Their habitat consists of wooded neighborhoods, parks, open woodlands, forests, brushland, fields, farmland, and much more. The Eastern Screech Owl's diet consists mostly of insects, small rodents, beetles, moths, crickets, large insects, mice, shrews, bats, small birds, lizards, frogs, spiders, earthworms, crayfish, and other things they can get a hold of, and even some small fish. The Great Horn Owl diet consists of mostly mammals and birds such as rats, mice, rabbits, squirrels, possums, skunks, even geese, ducks, other hawks, or I should say hawks, and other small owls. Snakes, lizards, frogs, insects, scorpions, and occasional fish. The barred owl's diet consists mostly of small mammals, such as mice and small rodents, squirrels, rabbits, opossums, uh, shrews, birds, frogs, salamanders, snakes, lizards, insects, crayfish, crabs, and fish. So here's, here's how the screech owl sounds. Almost like a lady screaming. What they say it kind of sounds like someone screaming. Here's how the great horned, horned owl sounds. Okay, and my favorite one, uh, I grew up listening to these in our woods that I grew up in. We grew up in the deep woods uh, in southern Warren County. and We'd hear these all the time. So here it is. Pardon. <laughs> They definitely get your attention when they when they make their sound. Okay, so we'll go on to the next one here. Common night hawk and the whippoorwill are all part of the night jars family of birds. They are a migratory bird that resides in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young. Common night hawks are common throughout Ohio, while whippoorwills are actually in decline and less common to see. You will see them mostly in southern and eastern Ohio. Uh, common nighthawks habitat consists of open country in general and are often seen in the air over cities and towns. Uh, they'll inhabit any open, semi-open terrain, clearings and forests, open pine woods, prairie country, farmland, suburbs, and city centers. Cities and towns are probably the most popular place to see the common nighthawk. The whippoorwill Habitat consists of leafy woodlands of either deciduous or mixed deciduous and con uh, coniferous uh, trees, um, which would be pines and spruces. The common nighthawk feeds on insects, and they feed mostly on flying insects such as beetles, moss, grasshoppers, swarms of winged ants or termites, and other insects. The whippoorwill feeds primarily on insects as well, and they feed on night flying insects such as moss, beetles, and mosquitoes. I like that because they go after the mosquitoes. So here's how the common nighthawk sounds. And here's the whippoorwill, which you may have heard them um, in this region here and there, especially near some large woodlands. And they sound just like the name, whip a will, whip a will. That's how they how they call out. Okay, our next one is the chimney swift. It's in the family of swifts of birds. They are a migratory bird that resides in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young, and they are common throughout the state of Ohio. Their habitat consists of open skies, especially over cities and towns, forages in the sky over any kind of terrain where there are flying insects and they are now most common over all of our cities and towns a lot of times. 
Uh, and within its range, few forests remain for, with it for hollow trees, which is important for it to have good nesting sites. And so it, it will be in different uh, parts of the city looking for those places that are no longer there, those hollow trees. They will utilize a lot of building structures for nesting, hence the name chimney swift because they are looking for those, those holes uh, that the old trees would have provided for them in our structures now. So a lot of abandoned buildings, um, you might see these uh, birds uh, nesting in. Their diet consists of flying insects such as beetles, flies, uh, grasshoppers, katydids, moths, and spiders. They will concentrate at times on swarming insects such as winged adult ants and maybe even termites. And here's how they sound. You've probably had one of these birds make a nest somewhere in one of your structures at some point, I'm sure. Um, this is probably the one that did it. Oh, a favorite of many people, the ruby-throated hummingbird. It's part of the hummingbird family of birds. They are a migratory bird that resides in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young. They are common throughout the state of Ohio. They will not be here in the winter as they will not su survive in the cold weather. They actually migrate to far southern areas of the U.S. and Central America uh, into South Florida. That's where they like to head to. Their large concentration goes all the way down there. Well, they'll remain uh, until the warm year or the warm weather will return in Ohio. Then they'll come back up here. South Florida is warm all year, and so that's where they go until it gets warm here, and then they work their way back up. Their habitats consist of your backyard, mature forests, woodlands, flower gardens, Wherever flowers full of nectar are blooming, they are feeding on them. Their diet consists mostly of nectar and insects. They take nectar from flowers and will feed occasionally on the tiny little insects. They like um, tubular flowers, so they are able to get in to get the um, nectar inside. Uh, a trumpet vine would be an example of a tubular flower that they would enjoy to have uh, for their food. They will also feed on sugar water mixes um, at hummingbird feeders, but it's not always that good for them. So it's better to have a nectar-based uh, food for them. Here's how they sound. That's their wings as they're flying. That's how fast they fly, or their wings move, I should say. Okay, next is the red-headed woodpecker and the red-bellied woodpeckers. They're part of the family of woodpeckers of birds. These two woodpeckers have a range throughout the Ohio and all corners of the state. The red-headed woodpecker is a year-round resident in southern Ohio and a migratory bird in northern Ohio. The red-bellied woodpecker is a year-round resident throughout the state. Their habitats are similar and prefer large woodlots, forest land, and anywhere with older established trees. Both of these, tree, or both of these birds are omnivores, and their diet consists of insects, spiders, earthworms, tree frogs, nuts, seeds, berries, uh, wild and cultivated fruit, sometimes small rodents, eggs, and nestlings of other birds occasionally. So here's how the red-headed woodpecker sounds. You may have heard that, that sound a time or two, and this one definitely you probably hear a lot. I know I grew up here in these. Very cool. Another set of woodpeckers, the downy and the hairy woodpeckers are part of the woodpecker family of birds. And they have a range throughout Ohio in all corners of the state, and they're both are year-round residents of the state. They're found in forests, woodlots, willows, gro river groves, orchards, and shade trees. The downy woodpecker is found in a variety of habitats um, from second growth woods to suburban yards and generally favors deciduous forests. And the hairy woodpecker is less tolerant of forest fragmentation than the downy woodpecker and prefers large older woodlands and more of a wilderness type habitat. These uh, woodpeckers feed mostly on insects, especially beetles, ants, wasps, caterpillars, 
Um, they also eat seeds, berries, and occasionally you'll see them at your bird feeder. Uh, hairy woodpeckers especially like to feed on larvae of wood boring insects. So those are the ones that go after those trees and they'll be pecking at them to get those uh, larvae out of the tree. And here's how the downy woodpecker sounds. Okay, and here's the hairy woodpecker. I know I've heard both of these before. Okay, on to our next set of woodpeckers, the northern flicker and the pileated uh, woodpecker are from the woodpecker family of birds. These two woodpeckers have a range throughout Ohio and all corners of the state and they're both year-round residents. The northern flicker is very common, while the palita is rare to see in Ohio and is uncommon to see on a regular basis. They are here, but just not in the large numbers. The northern flickers prefer its habitat to be open country and scattered woodlots, and like this setup more than any other woodpecker. This helps make it one of the more adaptable woodpeckers. The palita woodpecker is very picky of its habitat and prefers large, mature forests. The nesting pair needs at least 100 acres for their territory. That's a lot of area to cover for what they need. Eastern Ohio with large tracts of forest land are still abundant, and that is where they most likely are congregating in our state. Northern flickers consist of mostly, their diet consists mostly of ants and other insects. Um, they probably eat more ants than any other North American bird. Um, so if you live in a woodlands with lots of different uh, you know, ants in the trees or, um, you know, nests, ant nests, they are probably there eating them and enjoying them for their food. They'll also eat termites, beetles, and caterpillars, insects, fruits, berries, seeds, and nuts. The pileated woodpecker consists mostly of ants as well, fruits, and nuts. Carpenter ants may make up 60% of their diet. Um, termites, larvae of wood boring beetles, and other insects, wild fruits, and nuts make up the rest of their diet. So both of these enjoy eating ants. The northern flicker probably eats the most out of all of them though. And here's how the northern flicker sounds. And I know I've heard, had those growing up in my woods. Um, I think I've probably heard both of them, but definitely the northern flicker. And here's the pileated next. Very cool sounding birds. Okay, next we're gonna uh, get into some uh, larger categories of birds. Um, I won't have as many sounds for some of these. I'll have you go to the, uh, the, the uh, Obdubon uh, Society website and let you uh, take a look at their um, sounds they have there for all these birds. Um, all of these birds are part of the Tyrant uh, flycatchers family, and they're migratory birds that reside in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young, and they're common throughout the state of Ohio. These birds all prefer a habitat of mix of woodlands, forest edges, and brushy fields, parks, and wooded neighborhoods. All these birds have a diet of mostly insects, wasps, bees, ants, caterpillars, beetles, flies, moss, grasshoppers, cicadas, aphids, plant hoppers, leaf hoppers, shield bugs, and they'll eat spiders, millipedes, small fruits, and berries. The sounds you'll hear for what I'm gonna play for you is the Eastern Wood Peewee, the Eastern Phoebe, and the Eastern Kingbird. And if you'd like to visit, visit the Obbon.org um, Society website and be able to listen to those sounds. That's A-U-D-U-B-O-N.org. And I'll have it at the end for you as well. Some of our other categories will also do the same with the birds. So here's the Eastern Wood Peewee. Okay, so next is the Eastern Phoebe.
And here's the Eastern Kingbird. Like I said, go visit the website, uh, the Audubon Society website, to listen to more of these birds. Next, we've got the Vi uh, Virio family. Uh, these birds are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young. Most are common statewide in Ohio, except for the white-eyed Viero, which migrates to mostly southern Ohio, and the blue-eyed Viero do not migrate to Ohio, but are less common and migrate usually further north into Canada, but they are occasionally here. The habitat of Vieros range from various woodlands, parks, edges of fields, fence rows, brushy fields, or areas with plenty of large trees to open fields. These birds' diets consist mostly of insects, berries, caterpillars, moss beetles, wasps, bees, ants, bugs, flies, walking sticks, cicadas, tree hoppers, scale insects, snails, and spiders. And they will eat the berries from Virginia creeper, sumac, elderberry, blackberry, and dogwoods, and others. So you see here we have the white-eyed viero, the yellow-throated viero, the blue-headed viero, the red-eyed viero, and the warbling viero. And so we're going to listen to the white-eyed first. And I think I said it wrong, virio. I'm sorry, virio is how you would say that. So that was the white-eyed Virio. I need to make sure I say that right, Virio. The yellow-throated Virio is next. And the last one is the red-eyed Virio. I know that I have heard all those birds in the woods as well. Um, they're very, very uh, good song birds that you hear on a regular basis. Next, we have the blue jay. Everybody knows the blue jay. They're part of the crows, magpies, and jays family of birds. They're found plentiful throughout Ohio and are resident of the state year round. And they are very common to see at your bird feeders in the wintertime. They're usually running off all the little birds, chowing down on all the seeds. Uh, their preferred habitat are woodlands and a mix of oak, beech, and pine trees, but they can also be in suburban areas, towns, cities, parks, and just about anywhere with lots of tree growth. They are considered omnivores, with 75% of their diet consisting of acorns, beech nuts, and other types of nuts, seeds, grains, berries, small fruits, and sometimes cultivated fruits. Um, so 75% is usually vegetable type matter like that. The other 25% that will eat insects, caterpillars, beetles, grasshoppers, um, spiders, snails, and eggs of other birds, small rodents, baby birds, and frogs. So they can be a little bit of a problem for some of your smaller songbirds out there. And here's how they sound. Very aggressive, loud noise. You know it's them. Yeah, you hear those on a regular basis right there. Okay, the American crow is part of the crows, magpies, and jays family of birds, and they are found plentiful throughout the state of Ohio, and they are resident in the state year round. They be, can be quite a noisy bird, especially in groups. They have a very diverse habitat and can be found anywhere, and they are adaptable to all environments from rural, suburban, to urban. They prefer scattered woodlands, farm fields, pastures, meadows, fence rows, parks, and wooded neighborhoods. They are considered omnivores and tend to feed practically on basically anything um, that they can get a hold of. Insects, spiders, snails, earthworms, frogs, snakes, shellfish, garbage, eggs, and young of other birds, seeds, grain, berries, fruits, and I've seen them eat in the roadkill. Just about anything they can get a hold of. And here's how they sound. Yeah, 
they they let you know they're around when they're talking, don't they? Okay, next is the horn lark. Horn larks are part of the family of larks. They range throughout the state of Ohio and are most prevalent in western and northern Ohio, and they live in the state year round. They prefer large, barren fields, mud flats, sparsely vegetated fields, and meadows. Northern and western Ohio consists of a lot of these areas because of the farm fields that are up there, making it ideal for this bird. Their diet consists of seeds and insects and will feed on small seeds from a great variety of grasses and weeds, waste grains from farming, and then insects, spiders, snails, berries, or other things they'll consume. And here's how they sound. I've never seen one of these, so it'd be very cool to see in the future. Okay, so swallows are very popular around here. Um, the purple martin and barn swallows are part of the family of birds called swallows. They're migratory birds that reside in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young, and they're common statewide. Purple martin's habitat consists of large open areas close to areas of bodies of water. Barn swallows' habitat consists of open countryside near agricultural areas, hence the name. They love to be in barns and around barns. Purple martins feed on a wide variety of flying insects, such as wasps and winged ants, bees, grasshoppers, flies, including house flies and, and crane flies, beetles, moths, butterflies, dragonflies, and spiders. Barn swallows feed on a wide variety of flying insects as well, especially flies, including house flies and horse flies. Uh, beetles, wasps, wild bees, winged ants, moths, damselflies, grasshoppers, and other insects, spiders, snails, and occasionally berries and seeds. And here's how the purple martin sound. And here's the barn swallow. I'm sure you've, if you've got a barn, you've had barn swallows trying to make a nest in it, I'm sure. Some of my favorite birds growing up here in these in the woods, um, chickadees and titmice are in the family of chickadees and titmice. The Carolina chickadee is located all throughout Ohio except in the northern quarter of it. The tufted titmouse is located also in all of Ohio. The black-capped chickadee is located in the northern quarter of Ohio where the Carolina chickadee is not. So they basically are in the area that the Carolina is not. They are year-round residents or common visitors out of winter bird feeders. The habitat of both chickadees consists of a variety of woodland types, urban yards, parks, and they're very adaptable. The tufted titmouse's habitat consists of forests, woodlots, parks, and neighborhoods with lots of trees. Both chickadees' diets consist mostly of insects, seeds, berries, caterpillars, which make up a major majority of the diet, moss, beetles, aphids, spiders, um, weed and tree seeds, berries, and small fruits. The tufted titmouse diet consists mostly of insects and seeds. Insects make up to two thirds of its annual diet with caterpillars, the most important prey for it in the summer. They also eat wasps, bees, sawfly, larvae, beetles, true bugs, scale insects, insect eggs, pupa, spiders, snails, seeds, nuts, berries, and small fruits. So here's how the Carolina chickadee sounds, and I heard one actually this morning, or I got uh, this recording going. Very common in our woodlands down in Southern Ohio here. Here's the black cap chickadee, which you may not see around here, but in Northern Ohio you will. Very similar sounding. And here's the tufted tip mouse, also very common in our woodlands around here.
very pretty sound when you hear them in the woods. I hear you hear, heard those growing up a lot as well. Another one I grew up listening to a lot was the white-breasted nuthatch. They're part of the family of nuthatches and they're found throughout Ohio and a resident of the state year round. They're one of the few birds that can walk head first horizontal down a tree as you can see in these pictures. Their habitat are all sorts of woodland environments that consist of rural with lots of forest land parks and neighborhoods with lots of trees. They feed on insects, spiders, and some seeds. Um, they also are very popular at your bird feeders, um, eating on the suet and peanut butter mixtures at feeders, and they always seem to be at those things in the wintertime. They're very cool to see, and listen to the sound. You will recognize the sound when you do hear it. So yeah, that's a very popular one to hear if you live near some woodlands. Okay, so the wrens, um, we have the Carolina, the house wren, the marsh wren, and the sedge wren. The most popular one you're gonna see around here is the Carolina and then the house wren. The other two are out of our region as much and not as popular, um, more uncommon in our state. Out of all the wrens, the Carolina wren is the only year round resident of Ohio and is very common. The house wren, the sedge wren, and the marsh wren are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young. The house wren is common in Ohio, but the sedge and marsh are not common to see during migration. The marsh wren will be along Lake Erie, but rare to see in the rest of the state. The sedge wren is just rare to see in general. You will not see them in our region very much. Carolina wrens and house wrens habitat consists of, of all types of woodlands and forests, fence rows, brushy woodland edges, parks and suburban areas. The Carolina sedge wren and marsh wren's habitat consists of marshes, meadows, damp fields, and along woodland edges. All the wren's diets consist of insects, caterpillars, such as caterpillars, beetles, true bugs, grasshoppers, crickets, mosquitoes, flies, and some spiders, millipedes, snails, small lizards, tree frogs, berries, fruits, and seeds. You'll see these at the bird feeders as well. Uh, the sounds you're going to hear today are from the two that you'll see the most of, the Carolina Wren and the House Wren. So here is the Carolina Wren. I heard that one this morning as well. And here's the House Wren. Okay, so we'll move on to the blue gray gnat catcher. They're part of the family of gnat catchers. They're migratory birds that reside in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young, and they're common statewide. Their habitat consists of deciduous forest and woodlands, parks, and neighborhoods with lots of older, large trees. They require large trees of old growth, forest, and woodlands for nesting and residing in. Their diet consists mostly of insects which is leaf hoppers, tree hoppers, plant bugs, leaf beetles, caterpillars, flies, small wasps, and spiders. And here's how they sound. Very cool, very cool. Next is the thrush family of birds, which is bluebirds, berries, hermit thrush, wood thrush, and the American robin. Bluebirds, berries, hermit thrush, wood thrush are migratory birds that reside in Ohio uh, during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young. They are common statewide in Ohio. The bluebird is the only year-round resident in the far southern part of Ohio. So we may see eastern bluebirds in our part of Ohio in the wintertime. A lot of times you may see them at our bird feeders. The American Robin is the only year round resident of Ohio and there's lots of them. Bluebirds habitat consists of all types of open country, farmland, golf courses, meadows, and pastures. And most of the bird houses you see are to help provide nesting area for the bluebirds. At one time they were in decline um, and they're starting to make a comeback which is great to see. Uh, berries, 
hermit thrush and wood thrush. I'm not sure if I'm saying the varies right, but a very, very, I'm not sure if I am there. Uh, habitats consist of woodland lots, large wooded areas, forest land, woodlands, along cliff swamps and old growth forests. American Robins habitat live anywhere. They live just about anywhere you can think of. Woodlands, forests, fields, parks, urban areas, in your backyard. They're everywhere. They're very adaptable and common throughout our states. All of these birds' diets consist mostly of insects and berries. They feed on crickets, grasshoppers, beetles, spiders, earthworms, snails, and occasionally uh, lizards and tree frogs, and lots of berries. American robin can be seen on a regular basis in your backyard after those earthworms. On a regular basis, all the time they're after those earthworms. So the sounds you're going to hear are from the eastern bluebird and the American robin. Here's the bluebird. Okay, next is the American Robin. Very common to hear. Okay, so the American Robin. Next we have Mockingbirds and Thrashers. Gray catbirds, northern mockingbirds, and brown thrashers are part of the mockingbirds and thrasher family of birds. Gray catbirds and brown thrashers are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young. They are common statewide in Ohio. The northern mo mockingbird is the only year-round resident in the far southern part of Ohio. The habitats of all three of these birds consist of shrublands, brushy thickets, forest edges, overgrown pastures, woodlots, and some like to be in those suburban backyards. All of these diets consist mostly of insects and berries such as beetles, ants, caterpillars, grasshoppers, crickets, true bugs, and other insects as well as spiders, millipedes, wild berries, and some cultivated fruit, snails, sow bugs, earthworms, occasionally a crayfish, lizards, fish, and sometimes nuts. So they eat just about anything. Uh, so I've got the gray cat catbird, the northern mockingbird, and the brown thrasher to play for you here. So here is the gray catbird. So the gray catbird actually sounds like a cat meowing at first, if you hear. Take a listen. Again. That's how they start out. And here is the northern mockingbird, which, which they mock all kinds of different bird sounds. You never really know who you're talking to with this bird because it makes all the different birds that are out there in the, in the woods. <laughs> Here's the brown thrasher. So we'll move on to the cedar waxwing. What a bird. I have never seen this bird, but it is some, a bird I definitely want to see someday. They're part of the birds called waxwings. They're found throughout Ohio and are resident in the state year-round, especially in northern Ohio. Uh, they'll be here throughout the winter in southern Ohio, but more on an occasional basis. These birds are very nomadic and flocks can show up anywhere. They preferred habitats are woodlands close to open bodies of water. These birds' diets consist mostly of berries and insects with their annual diet consisting of berries and small fruits, a wide variety of different berries, which could be from juniper, dogwood, or wild cherries. They also eat some flowers and will drink oozing sap. They will occasionally then eat beetles, caterpillars, and ants. So here's how they sound.
Very cool. I wish I could see one of these, but I guess they're more up towards northern Ohio on a regular basis here. Uh, I wish they would come down and visit us in southern Ohio. Here's next, the warblers. There are lots and lots of warblers in Ohio. You've got the um, blue wing warbler, the northern parula, the yellow warbler, the chestnut sided warbler, the black throated green warbler, the yellow throated warbler, the pine warbler, the prairie warbler, the Celian uh, warbler, black and white warbler, the American red start, the Prot protonteri warbler, I don't even know if I said that right, the worm eating warbler, the oven bird, the Louisiana water thrush, the Kentucky warbler, the common yellow throat, and the hooded warbler, all part of family of, of birds called warblers, which Ohio has quite a bit, and these are just the common ones. All warblers in Ohio are migratory birds and reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young. Their community or their commonality varies statewide per the warbler species. Blue ring warblers are common throughout Ohio except in the heavy agricultural areas of western Ohio and their habitat consists of brushy fields, thickets, and woodland edges. Northern Parula is mostly seen in southern Ohio and its habitat consists of areas of woods and forests along streams. Yellow warblers can be seen statewide and their habitat consists of thickets, brushy fields, and scrubland. Chestnut sided warblers are most common in the northern part of the state with their habitat consisting of young woods, woodland edges, and brushy fields and thickets. The black throated green warblers are statewide with their habitat consisting of all types of woodland with a particular liking of hemlock tree gorges. Yellow throated warblers are found in the three quarter lower half of the state with their habitat consisting of woodlands along streams with sycamore trees. Pine warblers are most popular seen in southeastern Ohio with their habitat consisting of upland stands of native pine forests. Prairie warblers are located mostly southern and eastern Ohio with their habitat consisting of scrubby fields, locust groves, and old clear cuts and cedar groves. Celeon uh, uh, warblers are not common. Black and white warblers, American red start, oven bird, Louisiana warbler, Kentucky warbler, hooded warbler are located mostly in southern and eastern Ohio in the mature old large forests and some species like to be near the streams. So out of all those birds, the Celeon, Celeon warbler, I don't even know if I'm saying that, like I said, is not common and the rest of these birds are mostly located in southeastern Ohio in the mature old large forest. Uh, the protonotary warbler, there I said it right this time, is statewide but not common with their habitat consisting of wooded swamps and forests along streams. The common yellow throat is found statewide in habitats consist of wetlands and, and brushy fields. Warbler diets consist mostly of insects with, such as moss, bugs, ants, grasshoppers, beetles, caterpillars, aphids, grubs, ants, bees, walking sticks, spiders, worms, and some berries as well. The sounds you're going to hear are of the, the most common warblers that you might hear in Ohio. As you can tell, a lot of them are in southeast Ohio because they like heavy woodlands and they're just not as common because they're in those areas. Um, in this part of the state, you're going to have warblers that can adapt to our region where there's less woodlands. Um, there's some woodland areas of our state, but there's large tracts in eastern Ohio that they prefer. So here's the first one you're going to hear is the common yellow throat. I definitely hear this one all the time. And the next one's going to be the yellow warbler, another one you'll hear on a regular basis. Oops. Let me hit play here. There we go. I'll play the common yellow throat again. This is one you hear a lot around here. Okay, the next one we have here is the yellow-breasted chat, and they're part of the yellow-breasted chat family of birds. Yellow-breasted chats are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young. They're more concentrated in southern Ohio and more on occasion in northern Ohio. Their habitat consists of brush overgrown fields, 
brushy overgrown fields, thickets, fence rows, and scrubland. Their diets consist of insects and berries, which could be moss, beetles, bugs, ants, bees, wasps, mayflies, grasshoppers, katydids, caterpillars, and prey mantises, spiders, blackberries, elderberries, wild grapes, and other items. And here's how they sound. And I know I've heard these birds before, no doubt. Very cool sounds. Ohio has a large group of, of sparrows as well. You have the Eastern Towhee, the Chipping Sparrow, the Field Sparrow, the Vesper Sparrow, the Savannah Sparrow, the Grasshopper Sparrow, Henslow Sparrow, Song Sparrow, Swamp Sparrow, and the Dark-Eyed Junco are sparrows in the family of birds called New World Sparrows. So as you can see, we don't have the one from Europe here. We have all the native sparrows of our region here. The eastern towhee and field sparrow are resident birds year-round in southern to upper central Ohio and considered a migratory bird in northern Ohio, where they reside in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young. They are common statewide in Ohio. The chipping sparrow and vesper sparrow are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young. They are very common throughout the state of Ohio. The savannah sparrow, grasshopper sparrow, and henslow sparrow are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young, but it's not very common to see them in Ohio. Um, and and, if, and we're on, if they are around, they're in the northern fringes of the state. They're not uh, very common to see. They may fly in, um, but they're more in other states out of our region. The swamp sparrow and the dark-eyed junco are more common during the wintertime and migrate further north during summertime out of the state to breed and raise their young. So you may see them here in the winter and then they migrate north. The song sparrow is year-round resident of Ohio. Sparrow's diets consist mostly of seeds and insects, which is caterpillars, beads, grasshoppers, um, spiders, seeds of weeds and grasses, and berries. You'll see these um, birds a lot of times, the song sparrow, year-round, um, because you'll see those at your bird feeders. The sounds you will hear of what I have here listed is the eastern towhee, and the song sparrow will listen to. And you can go to the audubon.org website to listen to the rest of these birds. Here's the Eastern Toby. Okay, next we have the song sparrow. One you'll probably hear on a regular basis there. Okay, next we've got the Cardinals, Grosbeak and Bunting family of birds. So that consists of summer tanagers, scarlet tanagers, northern cardinal, rose-breasted grosbeaks, blue grosbeaks, and indigo buntings, and dick sissels are all part of this family. Summer tanagers, scarlet tanagers, the rose-breasted grosbeaks, the blue grosbeaks, indigo buntings, and dick sissels are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young. Summer tanagers are common in far southern Ohio, along with the blue grosbeak, which is less common and calmer further down into Kentucky. So they're here, but they're more into Kentucky um, that you'll see them. The rose-breasted grosbeaks are are common in Northern Ohio and uncommon in Southern Ohio. They're very common throughout the state though, where they are at. The scarlet tanagers and indigo buntings are common throughout all of Ohio and the dick sickles, sissels are not common except a small amount on the far western edge of the state. So they had quite a wide variety of commonality throughout the state. The Northern Cardinal is a year round resident of Ohio and is common all over the state. And that's why it's our um, state bird, because it's very well known in the state. Tanagers prefer habitats that are mature, deciduous forest of oaks and hickory. The northern cardinal is very adaptable and can be found in habitat from your backyards to fields to woodlands. And the rose-breast, rustic grosbeak 
blue grosbeak, indigo bunting, and the dick sisal prefer habitat to uh, habitat to be woodlands, brushy fields, and thickets, fence rows, orchards, and open countryside. The diets of these birds consist of seeds, insects, and berries, such as beetles, grasshoppers, caterpillars, ants, flies, spiders, centipedes, snails, seeds of weeds and grasses, waste grain, leaf buds, flowers, berries, and wild fruits. The sounds you'll hear are the northern cardinal, which is the state bird of Ohio, and indigo bunting, one of my favorite birds you'll see in the woods. I'm sure everybody's heard that bird. They're very, very distinct sound when they're in the woods. Or in your backyard. And then here's the indigo bunting after this. And here's the indigo bunting. Oops. Well, let me go back one here. There we go. Now let me play the indigo bunting. Very, very neat bird to see flying around. Okay, next we have the blackbirds and orioles family of birds, which is the bobo lynx, red-winged blackbirds, eastern meadowlarks, common grackles, brown-headed cowbirds, orchard oilers, and the Baltimore oilers. Bobo lynx, orchard oilers, and Baltimore oilers are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young. Baltimore oilers are located throughout all of Ohio, while the orchards are concentrated in southern uh, Ohio and more on occasion in northern Ohio. Bobo lynx are concentrated in northern Ohio and are more on occasion in southern Ohio. The red-winged blackbird, eastern meadowlark, common grackle, brown-headed cowbird are all year-round residents of Ohio and very common all over. Their habitats are open woods, scattered trees, open countryside, fields, meadows, parks, hay fields, and pastures. The red-winged blackbirds, brown-headed cowbirds, bobo lynx, eastern meadowlark, Orchard and Baltimore Oilers mostly eat insects and such as beetles, caterpillars, grasshoppers, spiders, millipedes, snails, seeds of grasses and weeds and waste grain berries and small fruits when they're not eating insects. The common grackles are omnivores and they feed on insects, beetles, grubs, grasshoppers, caterpillars, spiders, millipedes, earthworms, uh, crayfish, minnows, frogs, lizards, eggs, young, of other birds, small rodents, berries, seeds, waste grain, and acorns. So they eat a lot of different things. Um, the sounds you're gonna hear are of the red ringed blackbird, which is very common on my new house. Um, they really like living out in that field that we live in. That's their habitat, obviously. And you're gonna hear the common grackle, another bird that likes to be out in those areas. And then we'll hear the Baltimore oiler. So here is the red winged blackbird. You'll know that sound. You will know it when you hear it. And here's the common grackle. I had the Baltimore Oriole mixed in a little bit with that. Let me just play the common grackle by itself. Real quick. So you can tell it's it's very interesting sound when you hear them talking. They like to roost in pine trees. Here's the Baltimore Oriole. So yeah, you definitely will hear that sound once in a while in the woods as well. Okay, so we're down to the finches here. 
Uh, purple finches, house finches, and American gold finches are all in the family of finches. They are all year-round residents of Ohio and very common all over the state. Purple finches reside more along Lake Erie in northern Ohio during winter, but migrate north into Canada for summer migration. Purple finches habitat consists of conifer forests and other types of forests. House finches and American gold finches habitats consist of all types of open areas, yards, gardens, parks, farms, and other urban settings. They are very adaptable to living close to humans and a common sight at a bird feeder in the wintertime. Finches diets consist mostly of seeds, and some insects such as daisy, or the seeds they like to have are daisy composite family of seeds, seeds of weeds and grasses, small seeds of trees such as elm, birch, and, and elder. They will eat uh, buds, bark of young twigs, maple sap, and feed on insects, uh, just whatever type they're interested in. They have a wide variety they will eat. The sounds you'll hear are of the house finch and the American goldfinch, the common ones you'll hear in our region. The house finch. And here's the American goldfinch. Very nice. I like to see the goldfinches. They're quite the sight to see when you see them out and about. All right, so that wraps up our birds that we've talked about. So some places to go see birds in Butler County. Some popular spots I would maybe suggest. There could be some other great spots that I don't know about. Go check it out as well. Houston Woods State Park is a great spot to go up in College Corner, Ohio. Their website's listed there. They actually have some bird blinds that you can sit in and look over the lake in some shrubbery area to watch some of the birds along the lake. Um, there's also lots of old growth forests there. Um, some of it original forests that had never been cut down um, when they settled the state of Ohio. That would be some areas to go check out, some neat looking birds, I'm sure. Keener Park, which is where you guys have the, uh, all the educational program. They've got a great trail to walk down down to a creek down at the bottom of the valley area um, on the backside past the grassy area if you're ever there. There's lots of woods to see down there all the way down to the creek. Uh, lots of pathways to walk through there and check out um, the birds that may be residing down there. Governor Bed Metro Park or any of your Butler County Metro Parks, your Westchester Parks or Oxford Parks, um, Fairfield, so on and so on. But Governor Bed is in another area of old growth forest area. Um, that's a long creek um, area up in that, um, that's along that edge there. Uh, another great spot, very remote, lots of, lots of opportunity to see some birds. And of course, your own backyard. Birds are adaptable. There's lots of them that can enjoy an urban setting and they're there. Cardinals, Carolina wrens, finches. I see those all the time in the, in the subdivision we're renting in right now. Um, and I go out to my property, I'm building my house, I see the uh, the uh, killdeer and the red-winged blackbirds out there, uh, and the common grackles, they're out there. You know, it's just, uh, you gotta go to the habitats that you wanna see. There's lots of different places though. Some online resources for you youth that have been watching here today. There's a great game, tons of bird games on the Bird Academy Play Lab with the Cornell Lab with Cornell University. I would encourage you to go home and take uh, go to this website and do the learning games. They're very fun and interactive games. The Cornell Lab Publishing Group uh, th through Cornell University has also some great stuff through their app store, uh, bird coloring pages, puzzles, and books and more to download and print or participate online with. Um, definitely go and check those out so you can learn more about birds. And the last thing I would suggest is go to the Audubon Society um, website where so many birds are there and listed. Um, now I know I didn't talk about all the birds today um, of Ohio. I didn't talk about any water waterfowl, but that can be a, a next presentation I want to put together on uh, the talk about waterfowl of Ohio and any um, you know water birds of Ohio. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I don't have it on here, but Benitez.6 at osu.edu. Um, you can email me or you can call me at 
uh, to, to talk to me about birds or any, anything else, natural resources or agriculture or gardening or horticulture. Thank you today and thank you Westchester Parks for having me here today. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but I hope you enjoy this presentation and thank you again.